presentation is on unusual tumors hidden in blind eyes. I have no financial interest to disclose. Uh, the aim of this study was to describe three cases of unsuspected neoplasms in previously blind eyes with a recent onset of pain. Enucleation has uh, been well established as a definitive treatment of choice in patients with painful blind eyes, and it is a known fact that the thysical eye may harbor an occult neoplasm. Hence, a thorough preoperative assessment, including imaging, is highly recommended. Herein, we describe three patients with pre existing non seeing eyes with a recent onset of pain. All three underwent enucleation for pain relief, followed by histopathological assessment of the specimen. Our first case is that of a 24 year old female who had sudden onset severe pain in the right eye with redness for the past two months. Right eye had no vision for the past three years and there was no history of any trauma or surgery. On examination, the right eye had a total cataract. We can see this goldenish hue of the cataract with multiple refractile particles in the anterior chamber and a low intraocular pressure. The fundus was not visible. Imaging revealed a classic mushroom-shaped homogeneous globular mass lesion in the, along the posterior pole extending into the vitreous cavity and causing an outward bulging of the sclera. MRI further highlighted this outward bulge of the sclera. The patient received a short course of steroid therapy to decrease the inflammation, followed by enucleation with orbital implant. Histopathology revealed a diagnosis of a choroidal melanoma. Optic nerve margin was clear of the tumor. Patient received adjuvant radiotherapy. Systemic workup was negative for any metastasis and patient was symptom-free at one year of follow-up. Second case is of a 20-year-old male who had pain and redness in the left eye for two months. Uh, on examination, the left eye was uh, uh, had no light perception. It had an intercalary staphyloma, a myosed irregular pupil, a flat anterior chamber, and neovascular glaucoma. Fundus was not seen. Imaging revealed multiple hyperfective echos in the vitreous cavity, suggestive of vitreous hemorrhage. Patient underwent enucleation with implant. Histopathology revealed thinned out cornea, sclera, distorted lens, distorted staphylometers, uveal tissue and multiple dilated abnormal vessels were seen. Abutting these was a glial tumor with tumor cells infiltrating the choroid and normal layers of retina and optic nerve could not be identified. Diagnosis of ependymoma with vascular malformation was made. This patient was also asymptomatic at one year of follow-up. Third case is of a 24-year-old male who presented with pain and redness in the left eye for six months along with a decrease in the size of the eyeball. Left eye had low vision since childhood. On examination, left eye was thysical with no light perception. There was diffuse congestion, superior staphyloma, band shift keratopathy, complicated cataract, and synechia and iris neovascularization. Fundus details were not visible. Imaging revealed this small distorted globe with a highly reflective mass, diffuse mass present along the posterior pole, extending up to the optic nerve head. Enucleation patient underwent enucleation with orbital implant, and histopathology helped to clinch a diagnosis of choroidal osteoma with marked RP gliosis. Postoperatively, socket was healthy at one year of follow. Hence, we see that it is a well-known fact that blind eyes may harbor occult neoplasms and enucleation is the standard treatment of choice for pain management in blind eyes. The commonest neoplasm reported has been malignant melanoma. And uh, however, uh, most melanomas present a secondary glaucoma. Our patient had a low IOP. Similarly, retinal ependymomas are very rare tumors. Only two other cases described in literature. Choroidal osteomas are typically seen in females. And ours was a male patient with inflammation, thysis, and RP gliosis, none of which is classical for a choroidal osteoma. Hence, we conclude that a recent onset of symptoms in a previously blind eye, especially in the absence of any obvious cause for the same, must alert the ophthalmologist to the possibility of a neoplasm, occult neoplasm inside that eye. Our study describes the varied clinical presentations of such patients. And uh, we would like to reiterate that a preoperative imaging and a postoperative histopathological assessment of the enucleated globe must be emphasized. Thank you. Thank you, Preeti. I have a few critical questions to ask you. The first yes. case you see, first case presented somewhat like a pan uveitis. There yes. are crystals in the anterior chamber. Yes, sir. I thought, I thought maybe a plasma cell affection or a tumor Okay, yes. because they can ex express muscle bodies there, having a yes. crystal there, but your diagnosis is a choroidal melanoma. Yes. Okay. Now, how you describe a crystal in choroidal melanoma? Okay. The second question is that, uh, second case is ependymoma with vascular malformation. Have you done immunohistochemistry to prove this? Third is that osteoma. Okay. Have you examined the other eye? Because in 20% of osteoma, you have bilateral involvement. Okay, so these three questions I.
Yes, sir. So, uh, sir, the first case, we were also suspecting probably a plasma cell tumor or lymphoma. Uh, that was our uh, primary differential clinically. Because seeing crystals in the eye and seeing multiple reflective equals in the vitreous cavity, we were also suspecting that. But, uh, uh, and maybe in melanoma, melanoma is known to cause chronic uveitis. So maybe a uh, patient had a history of two months. So maybe chronic uveitis has led to some lipid uh, exudation, some vascular damage, which has led to crystal formation. And uh, those crystals, uh, the anterior chamber aspirate were also sent for assessment. And that also came negative for any plasma cells. Uh, so uh, that was in our mind also, because we also suspected crystals to be suggestive of a uh, plasma cell tumor. So in the, um, in the parietal osteoma patient, the second eye was examined. And if we see on imaging also, we can see that there is uh, no, uh, there is uh, no evidence of any osteoma in the other eye. So imaging and clinical examination of the other eye was also done as we do in all patients, because if it, if one eye is non seeing the other eye becomes more important. So a detailed evaluation of the other eye is done. And, uh, in second so case, ependermoma, yeah, ependermoma and the vascular malformation, immunohistochemistry. Uh, yes, immunohistochemistry was done. So we are uh, usually coordinate with the histopathology department and, uh, in majority of our patients where sir, unusual tumors come out, immunohistochemistry is done for all of them. So our patients go to a quaternary level institute and their IHC is done. So IHC was done in this patient also. Thank you. Smriti, one question. In your last case of osteoma, a yes, uh, lot of atypical features are there. Yes, so sir. how would you say that it is an osteoma and not dystrophic calcification? So that final diagnosis we based on the histology report. And since uh, we also saw multiple atypical features and uh, something like a thysis and such inflammation would more likely lead to a dystroph dystrophic calcification. But uh, that's the report that we got from histology that uh, this is finally the, the points which can differentiate a dystrophic calcification from an osteoma in a situation like that. Uh, so in this case, we had uh, well-defined uh, islands of bone formation which were seen and there were mature cancellous bone which were seen. Yeah, I, I wanted to raise the same concern because you do have uh, heterotopic calcification or yes, metaplastic calcification in uh, bone formation in blind eyes and this was the yes. patient who had presented with a thysis from childhood. So labeling it osteoma would be difficult. Dr. Deepankar would probably be able to tell more about this. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. You have to differentiate between the osteoma, coronal osteoma, and those of a calcification, dystrophic calcification. Yes, see, sir, there yes. is a very important clinical uh, histopathological finding. When you see in thysical eye, no calcification, these are mostly on the periphery, okay? But you see retinoblastoma calcification is concentrated intratumor. Now you see this dystrophic calcification or other calcification would have been in the outside the choroid, okay? But in osteoma, it will be limited to the, uh, what you say, within the choroid. If it is, if it is a CNBM or other thing, it can uh, have a breach, it can have a breach, mostly the choroid with a mature bone formation. That's a very important question how you distinguish yes. all four or five cases. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So, so that is what uh, we also had. We had mature cancellous bone formation in this eye and uh, history of thysis only of uh, two months. Thank you.